Hey everyone, welcome back. Today is the day we look at the fourth of five new melee weapons from the new war. No spoilers for the quest or lore here, so you can watch if you want. Normally, I would still recommend doing the quest first, since you can't access these weapons at all until you do that. They don't even show up in the market until you finish the quest, otherwise they can be farmed from the new bounties on Cetus and Fortuna. Yes, this weapon is probably the worst of the three, but there are ways to make it work. Once again, we got three weapon builds today, or uh, technically, four. So if you want to see what we can do with this fork, feel free to watch the memes unfold. Corum, synonymous with Copium, is basically a worse Guandao or Orthos Prime. Both have at least the same or higher crit damage. For the crit and status split, Corum is 24 and 30, Guandao is 32 and 20, Orthos is 24 and 36. Also, Corum randomly has 2.9 meter range when all the other meta pole arms have 3.0. A really confusing decision. Maybe it was made to balance the unique perk, which we'll get to later. Both Guandao and Orthos are 70% slash. Corum is only 41% and barely has higher base damage than the other two pole arms. Literally everything about Corum screams meta pole arm, but worse in every single category. So this means its perk must be decent, right? Well. Not exactly. So if you block E combo, you will plunge your polearm into the ground and after an eternity later, pull it back out with a shower of sparks. This explosion has 11 meter radius, no fall off, has a 1040 pure electric as base damage. Now this sounds interesting but there are a couple of caveats. It is treated as a slam attack and uses slam attack scaling logic, meaning elemental mods, crits, and base damage don't affect it. That's literally almost all of your mods. The things that do work on it? Faction damage and slam damage. And the new mods. Boreal's Contempt applies to Daunt damage, so if the explosion procs electric, which isn't even guaranteed, this will apply. The 90% melee damage doesn't apply though. The explosion does not have 100% status like I said and scales off with the weapon instead, however, status mods do not affect the explosion scaling. The near set bonus slam attack damage does apply though and functions additively with seismic wave here. Basically, the vast majority of your mods will do nothing for this weapon on its unique attack and because it isn't a heavy, it can't even benefit from combo counter like Tenet exec could on the heavy slam waves. How will we make it work? Well, let's look at those builds. First up is a normal melee build. I wanted to give it a chance and this weapon is so bad with the gimmick that maybe we can actually use it as a legitimate normal polearm. It still is worse than Orthos and Guandao though in this aspect. This is your basic slash melee build. We have Blood Rush to scale the crit chance, pushing us to 129.6 at 12x combo. Weeping Wounds brings us to 162% status at 12x. Primed Smite double dips our slash procs for 2.4 times more damage. Organ Shatter scales the crits. Primed Reach for that uber mega 5.9 meter poke range and Prime Fury for even faster poke poke. Condition Overload because Primer being used to apply a bunch of statuses such as Viral, which is why we don't mod it on the weapon. Boreal's Contempt. This is an interesting one. It double dips on status effects, but it doesn't do the 60% damage listed here. It's 30%, and double dipping 30 turns into a 69% damage bonus. This is a separate type of multiplier than Bane's, so they are multiplicative to each other, not additive. Multiplying is always stronger than adding, so this is a good thing. Normally this slot is taken up by Gladiator Mites, but the 69% more final multiplicative dots and free 90% base damage equivalent to one status stack for condition overload is too much to turn down. I'm slapping this with a Kuva Nucor today, since this is just a basic Kuva new core setup for applying viral, radiation, and heat. It also applies impact since it was an impact progenitor, and I'm making that also produce slash because of hemorrhage, but you can just use a magnetic progenitor new core also. It really doesn't matter. New core also has one extra microwave hidden status when it inflates body parts for condition overload. Secondary dexterity for an extra 7.5 seconds combo duration, which obviously we pair with Neromont's power spike so that combo never really fully decays. Frame build does not matter, but throw on arcane strike as well for even more attack speed. We are showcasing buffless Corum. Though if you can't fit it, I would suggest trying to fit on the nearest set mods, the two that can go on your Warframe for a free 200% base damage. Level 160 Corrupted Heavy Gunners. It looks like it does well, but this is largely in part because of Boreal's Contempt. 
it is a massive upgrade over Gladiator's Might. If you took that same mod and put it on Orthos or Guan Dao, it would perform that much better. Now against trash mobs, you won't really notice a difference, but against Endurance, it will become very obvious, especially because Corum is basically half as likely to proc Slash due to its dysfunctional Slash weight. I want to slot Karnas on this, but where would you even slot it? It is a very nice fashion piece though, so Corum has that going for it, almost good enough to be a Tenujin. Guandao Prime can sort of give it a run for its money, but Guandao tends towards Oriental, whereas Corum looks more high fantasy. The real reason why I'm hating on the normal melee performance of the Corum so much is because the gimmick doesn't make up for it. This is the extent of the normal melee performance where you have lackluster slash weight and you're already competing for Karnas slots. So let's take a look at the memes, shall we? This is a build for the blocky shockwave gimmick. It looks slightly reminiscent of the tenant exec build I made in the past, however, since it isn't a heavy attack, corrupt charge is missing. Boreal's Contempt is our new mod that I guess can technically take that same slot, although it doesn't match the firepower of just straight up two times more damage. As you saw, the Shockwave Slam is insanely slow on this weapon, and as a bare minimum, I would recommend slotting Prompt Fury, Quickening, and also Arcane Strike. I would even go further to take an attack speed damage buff if you really want to use this, maybe from the Helmet, or a frame that has it naturally. Primed Smites are one of the few mods that can scale into slams and will let us do 2.4 times more damage if the electric dots proc. Otherwise, it's just a raw 1.55 times more damage on the explosion itself. We want to pull enemies together and group them for the slam AoE, so Tech Gravity is here to pull in any approaching enemies within 15 meters for a further follow-up slam. More enemies caught means more electric chaining, meaning more damage. You'll notice we have a full tech set bonus. This is because the pull effect of tech gravity requires a mark zone to be present. This weapon has free slots, so you might as well slap it on. Tech set also fits nicely on our panzer we're bringing since we want tech assault to dodge lethal hits regardless. Then tech enhance as well, which doesn't do anything useful on panzer. But once again, free slots. And this guarantees that the mark zone will appear more often and thus granting us much more uptime on tech gravity's pull. We just want it for the set bonus, and the last is on frame, which we'll look at later. Now, why do we want to pull enemies in? And why do we want Prime Breach on a slam build? Prime Breach does not extend the 11 meter shockwave AoE. It only affects the cylinder radius of the downward thrust. This is actually useful because the more enemies we hit, the more likely one of them dies to trigger the Saxum set, and the downwards thrust has a decent hitbox already and also can proc slash. Saxum Thorax is the entire reason this gimmick mode can even work. This is a mod that does percent HP damage in an AoE when enemies die, so this description is actually wrong. It does not require lifted enemies to proc. Lifted enemies just make it not go on cooldown. If you kill non-lifted enemies and trigger this, it will go on a 6 second cooldown. This is irrelevant though because Corum does his explosion all in one hit for the damage, so regardless, everything should die when it triggers. I say should because it requires full armor strip for it to work. Otherwise, the percent HP damage gets mitigated by armor and just tickles. We want to make sure that they get one shot to trigger the set bonus. A full set gives us 30% HP damage scaling and a full 12 meter radius nuke. Therefore, we're basically buffing our slam damage to one shot, hopefully at least one enemy within 11 meters of the shockwave, and then trigger Saxum Thorax explosions to kill everything else within 12 meters of the bodies. This particular gimmick works decently on Caliban. Here is his build. Now I only have one Nera mod on because I just couldn't fit the second one. If you really want the second mod, which will only push you from 300 to 400% slam damage, drop tech collateral for it. I would also recommend trying stretch here instead to extend the radius of your armor strip zone to 14.5 meters if you want. Though in theory, you don't need a central strip zone. You can cast these near doorways and play towards center tile because it only requires enemies to pass through the zone to be perma stripped. Megas Anomaly will be your friend here for this. The kit's energy economy is tight, so I slotted both Primed Flow and Equilibrium to work with the Panzer, which we are bringing for the tech set, and Energize as well. The synth set will give you basically near endless amount of energy orbs, which will give you basically near endless amounts of health orbs, which will convert into energy. Arcane Strike because the slam is god awfully slow. Prime continuity to make our four full strip zones last longer, as well as the rest of our abilities. We hit the 200% full strip benchmark due to growing power, which also lets us run a rank 8 blind rage to save on energy a tiny bit. Rolling Guard to get yourself out of a pinch, as our primer will still be carrying two Augur mods for energy to shield conversion and restoring shield gate. 
This Saxon mod can be unranked. Roar is our helmet because it buffs the percent HP scaling of Saxon. A 54.3% Roar, which is even before growing power, will scale into Saxon and turn that 30% HP damage into 46.29% HP damage. Two viral procs on anything will be enough to guarantee they die. Your three will serve as distractions to keep enemies off your back and fast shield gate restoring. And your two... Well, your two. See here is the way to get lifted status on everything. Caliban is the only frame that can AoE armor strip at the same time as give lifted status in an AoE, and it also gives damage vulnerability, which is bugged and only applies to the first hit, but since Korm hits in one blow, that's fine. We also still have that helmet slot open for Roar to scale into Saxum damage. This is a setup that is unique to Caliban. He is perfect for this. CO doesn't work on this loadout, so the same epitaph build as earlier. Pure viral with Saxum Spittle. The secondary arcane doesn't matter because we aren't building combo, and epitaph doesn't reload. Oh yeah, and all of the gimmick quorum setups from here onwards use Xeneric to squeeze in a free energizing dash for our energy economy, because we aren't building for any kind of combo as it doesn't affect crit or status of this attack mode. You want to see it in action? Here you go, same old level 160 corrupted heavy gunners. Now let me say, the damage numbers you will see are mostly irrelevant because it's percent HP based damage. So what I want you to consider instead is the time it takes to do a rotation and how consistently it kills all of them. Look, it even works without sentient wrath. This is assuming the line of sight checks are messed up on the skill because it isn't supposed to be line of sight, but it requires roar to skip it. If you don't have Roar up to magnify the Saxon percent HP nuke, then you do need his 2 so he can chain explosions without cooldown, and it can still fail even with Roar. So basically what you want to do is place your 4 in areas they need to pass over, drag them to you with Anomaly and use the block E to blow them all up once they're reasonably close. You don't need tight grouping because Quorum Explosion has 11 meter AoE with no falloff, and Saxon hits out to 12 meters. Now if you don't want to play this sweaty, I got another setup for you that is a lot more comfortable to use. You may remember Vobin from my Vertilac video. Well, he was actually using the Quorum config. Vertilac was much easier to use, so I could easily repurpose it that way. But let's take a closer look at him now. 45 efficiency in relying on your alt to full strip. This is a very expensive build to run, so I've slotted Spectro Siphon alongside Energize for an endless supply of energy orbs. Strike for faster slams, as you know. You can pull enemies into Bastille with Anomaly, so this is where we will get our grouping. Nier's Anguish is an Exilus mod, so I threw it up there because I didn't have the right polarity for Prime Share Footed. Tech is once again here to drag in more enemies while we're in the midst of killing the enemies. It's just a nice quality of life touch, but you can swap it out for another Nira mod for raw damage on the slam if you're having consistency problems. Prime sure footed to not get knocked, and some duration plus range to make sure Spectro Siphon and your 4 cover large area while lasting a while. Saxum, I've already explained, and we're using a full set bonus again, the others being on our Epitaph Primer, Saxum Spittle, and Corum itself. I'm using the exact same Corum build as Caliban, so if you want to see it, click the timestamp for earlier. Blind Rage gets us to 199% strength, which will strip 99.5% of their armor off after 5 seconds. This is good enough for the rotation, and you could technically even wait for 6 seconds, as I don't expect you to be nuking the area more often than that. Let's show this pretty one. Spawn them in. Cast Bastille and Spectro Siphon. Spam an Omni and Epitaph when they come closer. Corum Slam. That's it. Get tons of energy back to sustain yourself. You can also buff with Overdriver for a bit more slam damage from your 2 if you want. Your best deal will only last 23 seconds or so, but you can chuck another one when it turns into a vortex for a few seconds when it expires. This ensures nothing can sneak up on you and the strip is ready to go again once vortex ends. You do not ever want to forcefully collapse a Bastille on this setup because you are 100% reliant on the full strip for work and that vortex would last a long time. When Vortex is up, you cannot strip with a new Bastille. If you want to benefit from the lifted enemies, you can go Heavy Slam before the Shockwave slamming with a block E, and this will allow more Saxum Explosions to go off by not triggering the cooldown. And that's about it. But perhaps the best user of the Quorum currently is Zephyr. Why Zephyr? It's due to how her tornadoes work. You have two possible builds today. The only difference is whether you drop Nira's Hatred for Funnel Cloud's Augment or not. 
Why funnel clouds? Well, remember how Saxum does percent HP damage? And how the explosion does 11 meter AoE with zero falloff? Well, anything that hits a tornado will be regurgitated in an AoE around it. So that 11 meter AoE will hit all three big tornadoes, meaning each tornado will spit that same electric damage back out. You get three times more damage as a bonus on top of the original explosion, meaning Korm's slam now does four times more damage. And it also ragged all and groups enemies together is free CC. Once something dies, that 30% HP damage with 12 meter radius will also hit all three tornadoes and magnify that 30% to four times more damage, albeit it has the face armor. You are much more likely to kill from Korn's explosion itself due to the electric chaining on Zephyr for this reason since you don't strip. Funnel Clouds trades CC and utility for even more raw firepower. You now have 11 tornadoes instead of 3, so you gain an extra 11 times damage from Quorum's explosion and the Saxum set when they trigger an AoE, meaning everything now does 12 times more damage. If somehow something lives Quorum's explosion, there is no way they will live the 12 times 30% HP scaling damage, even Demolists on Steel Path. I don't know how high this scales, but it easily one-shots everything instantly at base Steel Path without stripping armor, including Acolytes. Back to the build, it's focused around playing very safe with just a single Nera's mod to get the initial explosion going. Saxum for the mandatory full set bonus and natural talent since a ton of your DPS will come from Tornado Span, which is very slow to cast. Her helmet is actually in snare today to group up enemies even tighter and prepare them for a tornado. This is best for the funnel cloud setup because it will provide you with the missing ragdoll CC while also concentrating the electric procs all into one area. It is the highest possible DPS setup for funnel clouds. If you aren't using the augment, feel free to take Roar instead for the double dip scaling of Korm's explosion and electric dots. I'm not sure if Zephyr's tornado gets to dip beans again, but if it does, the resulting 4 times damage it spits back out on base triple tornado will triple dip the Bane and Roar. It will also at least double dip the Saxum set too and possibly triple dip it from Tornadoes. Equilibrium fixes our energy problems with Prime Flow and Arcane Energize. Because we are once again pairing it with the Panzer I mentioned earlier with the Viral Quills and Synth Set Synergy to spawn infinite health orbs and be able to pick them up even at full HP. Strike for faster slams as always on every build, a Rolling Guard keeps you safe in a pinch, but Turbulence will also help you avoid non-AoE enemy fire. Some extra duration so the build is comfier to run and prime sure footed to prevent knocks. If you don't have this, then all of the builds today, you can replace it with Handspring. Brief Respite guarantees that we will get all our shields back with any ability cast, alongside a two-piece Augur set bonus. I don't know why the Arsenal says three-piece, there are only two here on this loadout. One Augur mod on Epitaph because the other slot is Saxum Spittle, and the Augur Reach on our frame. This range does help us get a slightly better seeking on our Tornadoes as well as a Ragdoll pull in on airburst if you want to use it. Also it helps in snare. This makes any ability on the loadout be enough to fully refill our shields for shield gating. This is the ultimate Corum Zephyr that can annihilate Steel Path. And remember, if you still have energy problems, we got a Xeneric for energizing Dash. I got one last build to show you today. This one is Saren. Normally Saren fixes everything. But I'll tell you right now, she can't save this weapon. It's literally full strip or go home. This is a Saren buff stick build. We're just piling on duration and strength and gutting everything else. We got double Nera's mod this time. We're going for raw damage DPS and not maximum Saxum set mod deeps. We want to be able to straight up kill on the explosion. Jize and Prime Flow will strike to make up for that negative efficiency. Use Mont for shield gate regen when shield breaks with rolling guard. This means the Corum build does need to be changed a bit too. It's the same build as earlier, except the three mods in the top right corner have been swapped. AoE DPS means we no longer need primed reach. Tech gravity is useless since we're running around instead of semi-camping for grouping. And Saxon mod is useless since we're going for raw damage to kill. So we pile on as much toxin as possible and shocking touch. Both of these will scale into toxin lash hits, as well as venom dose helping us. And also the epitaph from earlier. Let's buff up and go to town. Level 160 corrupted heavy gunners, grouping them up with anomaly. Primer with Epitaph, Shockwave Slams, it kills, but it's very underwhelming. It takes like 3 or 4. The only reason they might actually die is if you hit them directly with a Downward Slam, which does a ton of damage and can also proc Slash, which bypasses armor and electric doesn't. That mod also actually scales properly, whereas the Explosion doesn't. Besides that, the Shockwave tickles when they have armor. And to add insult to injury, look at this. 
If you take this identical loadout and just heavy slam instead, without even priming, they all die. Without even grouping them up, not even Saren can save the gimmick on this weapon. It really is a full strip or go home, but you can play the heavy slam this way. Though this would work on literally every single melee in the game and not just Corum. And it isn't even a proper heavy slam build. No corrupt charge, no crit scaling, nada. At least it has style going for it. The fact Saren works on everything is nice, but the fact that it can't even save this is just sad. Feel free to check out the rest of the video showcasing each of the four setups on Steel Path. Normal melee build, the two full strip setups on Caliban and Vobin, and Saren's mixture of Shockwave Slam and Heavy Slam. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible. Like I've done with covering all of this new war stuff. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm going to continue dropping tons more new war content in the future. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.